How do I achieve perfect exposures? Do I use TTL, guess my way there, or meter it? Let me start out by walking you through my process of lighting the simplest of lighting setups, flash on camera. I'm gonna use TTL, I'm gonna guess my way there, and I'm gonna meter it. So this video is gonna have many secrets. And the first one is gonna be using this Calibrite color checker to see if I have a perfect exposure. Let's start using the guess method. For all these tests, my light will start at power five with my camera set to its base ISO of 100, F11 at 1 125th of a second. My first exposure looks like this. I'm going to guess to get closer and I get this. Then I will check my 18% gray and see if it reads between 117 and 119. When the 18% gray patch under the yellow reads between 117 and 119, you have a perfect exposure, presuming your scene is evenly lit. Now I'll use the exposure slider in Capture One to approximate how much to dial my light up or down. Then I'll make another power adjustment to my light based upon the amount I have to move the exposure slider to get to this technically correct exposure. I got 120, which is pretty perfect. So I'll see if a tenth makes a difference and it brings me to 116, so barely. Since 116 is closer to idea without going over, I'll say it took me four shots, but you can argue it only took three to get to a near perfect exposure just guessing my way there. Now I know at this point you have some questions like why 117 and 119? Don't worry, I got the answer coming soon. And next, I'm going to use a light meter. Before taking my first picture, I adjust the light based upon the metered reading and see if I need to power the light up or down. So no need to take a test frame. Then I will come over to the gray card and see how close I am to getting the 18% gray to read between 117 and 119 and I got it on my first try. So I know it looks like I cheated, and I kinda did. I did a quick meter calibration prior to the shoot. I take a reading, and let's say my meter reads F11. Then I take a picture with my camera set to F11. Then I check the gray patch on my target. I'll adjust the light until the gray patch is between 117 and 119, or closest without going over. Then I'll dial in the exposure compensation on my meter so that when it reads F11, I also get a perfect F11. Now my camera and meter match. Now the meter can still be off by one tenth of a stop, but as long as I don't change lenses, I know my meter will nail the exposure every time. The reasons lenses matter is because there's a huge difference between an f-stop and a t-stop. An f-stop is simply the focal length of a lens divided by the size of the opening that the light goes through. So an 85 millimeter lens with an opening of 42.5 millimeters will be an f2 because 85 divided by 42.5 equals two. But a t-stop is a measured light transmission of the lens. This is why you see many lenses with a t-stop that read 2.9 or 3.1 versus 2.8. So when looking up lens tests on different 2.8 lenses on DxO mark, you will find they range from f2.9 to f3.5 of actual light transmission. And depending on the lens, you can even see slight exposure differences throughout the zoom range and when macro focusing. So your lenses with f-stop ratings can easily be off by up to 0.7 stops based upon some of the readings I saw on DxO mark. Now, before we get to TTL, I bet you're asking why is an 18% gray not reading 127 or 128, instead 117 or 119 when 127 is halfway without going over when looking at an 8-bit scale of 0 to 255 on histogram. But there are levels to this. This is because an 8-bit value for photographic exposures are not on a linear scale. Most, if not all, digital cameras use sRGB or Adobe RGB color space, which 18% gray should technically render 117 or 119, depending on the source you get your information from when you research this. But let's not skip over TTL. And this is what I got with my first TTL exposure. Then I'll lock my exposure and manually adjust the light to get our ideal exposure. I was able to do this with just one move and TTL overexposed this scene by about 0.59 stops. And then going to our subject wearing all black on a black background, the exposure stayed pretty much the same. But when I have them turn their head, the TTL face priority seems to be fooled and my exposure increases by another half stop. Now I said, well, what happens if I turn their head on a white background? Well, now I lost a full one and one tenth stop. I tried this multiple times and the results were the same. TTL has gotten smart 
using both subject face and the background, but still not perfect. Easy to recover from, but not ideal if you don't want to deal with these corrections later or if a client is looking at your screen. Now, before we get to gels, let's discuss the pros and cons of each. The problem I have with the guest method is simply every time I change my lighting, I have to go through the guessing game again. And when using multiple lights, it can potentially take longer. And yes, will we be covering how to use multiple lights as well? Absolutely. Now, when I am lighting for a certain feel that isn't technically correct, I do end up guessing my way there a bit anyway, but a meter tells me how far away from an ideal exposure I am so I can replicate any recipe I create. The guess method is also best when shooting tether. So TTL definitely has its place, especially when shooting events where it can outshine all the other methods. And later, we'll also show some scary things that can happen when you use multiple lights in TTL. Next, you have a light meter, which is my preferred method. I'll be talking about it more, so let's move on to gels. But one thing I will say about metering is there are certain instances where you're just not able to get a light meter in there, and you may have to refer to some of the other methods that we discussed above. But on a serious note, any teacher that tells you that any of these methods are bad is simply a bad teacher in my opinion. Learn to use all of them and simply find which one works for whatever situation you're in. So now let's talk about gels. The best way i found to get the most accurate exposure from gels is to simply make sure your light is properly exposed prior to putting a gel on it and then gel it. For this set, I intentionally have a white wall, a fashion gray background, and our model is wearing beige with denim shorts on and red tights plus an extra large color checker so you have multiple references to look at. So I'm going to go through 10 different gels, multiple reds, greens, and blues, and purples to show you the results that this technique has and how well it works. Now I'm making zero adjustments to these images, and I'll put the name of the gel in the corner if I know what it is, but I've sadly cut the label off of some, so I apologize if I don't have the name and I just put question marks. So now using the guess method when it comes to gels, I recommend using a color checker or a pure white reference. Each of the neutral gray squares is a stop apart, so if you shoot a color checker, you want your white patch to be the color you're going for, and you can also look at the skin tone patches in the upper left-hand corner to get an idea of how it will expose on darker and lighter skin tones. If you look back at the previous examples, our model skin lines up fairly well with the skin tone patch for lighter skin tones. Now the guessing method fails if you simply have the wrong gel for the wrong job. For instance, when I overexpose this deep red to match this light red, I start to lose some of the tonality and get hue shifts, and then I need to use HSL sliders to correct the hue shifts, and it's simply not ideal. I didn't test the TTL method, but I'm assuming it would fail and you'll see why coming up. Now when using a meter, it doesn't know that you need to intentionally underexpose to get the desired results from your gels. So for instance, if I white balance to 18% gray on this image, then raise the exposure to get 18% gray to render accurately, I would need to raise the exposure over three stops, which the meter would most likely tell you causing you to overexpose if you just trusted the metered reading. But let's take this to another level. If we look at the specs of a gel in its respective manufacturer's app and see it has a light transmission value, we can use some math to calculate how much we should underexpose from its metered value. So if we take the metered f-stop of the gel light at f4 and we divide four by the square root of the transmission value found in the app, which is 12, we would get an exposure of approximately 11.5. Okay, no more math, but you said you wanted to know. Let's get to the three light setup. 
and then we'll talk a little bit more about this. But first, let's talk about the three biggest mistakes people make when using gels. Using the wrong gel for the wrong job and simply trying to over or underexpose or use HSL tools to get to a happy place. Be mindful of the color profile you're using. Adobe RGB and sRGB, those are color spaces. But the color profiles such as Fuji Film Simulations give all these results with the same gel. Choose one that best fits the look you're going for, but I like something with a natural color balance and natural contrast curve like Fuji Astia. The color temperature lights will not only affect the final color output, but also the transmission value we discussed earlier, which will also affect your exposure. Now, one thing that's very important is don't take my word for it. Get into the studio and test. Take notes, see what your results are, so that when it comes to doing your next shoot, you can refer to those notes for whatever your favorite gels are. It's very important that you don't do that testing on the day of, and you do it a little bit ahead of time. And another reason I want you to get into the studio and test is that the color science of your camera will also affect these results. So you should do it understanding your full workflow. Now, how do we relate this to LEDs? Well, I don't know because I haven't tested it. I wish more people would admit to that, but what are you gonna do? But what I would do if using LEDs in HSI mode with the saturation set to 100%, is to underexpose three stops to my metered reading. But a lot of LEDs do have gel packs pre-programmed into them. And if that was the case, I would again use the app from the gel manufacturers and dial in the exposure compensation based upon the transmission values that we talked about before so that you can still get close when using a light meter. But just understand the color science of the LEDs is much different than those using standard tungsten or even flash tubes and simply gelling them. So there may be some other things to compensate for, but again, this is why we test. Now, I bet you didn't know the angle at which your light hits your subject will affect their exposure. Two lights can meter the exact same, but exposed differently based upon their angle. So in this three light setup, we have a large octa as our main light, a seven inch reflector as a hair light, and a pro globe going through an eight by eight magic cloth as our fill. The main light metered at F4, the hair light metered at F4, and the fill light metered at F2.2. Now, as you can see, the hair light is giving the brightest exposure from this angle. I almost forgot. When using the gray card method we discussed earlier, make sure it's straight on to the lens for this reason. If you have your gray card at a slight angle to the camera, it can actually change the measured values that you get once you start going in with the color picker to see if you got between 117 and 119. Now you see, even though the hair light and the main light are metered the same, their exposure is different. The difference between direct, direct polarized, and diffuse reflections is why you get the different results. I could nerd out on this, but I'll save it for another time. But here are images of just the hair light taken one stop apart. So depending on the hair color, wardrobe, or how oily someone's skin is, you may want to meter one to two stops down or one to two stops over, depending on the creative effect you may be going for. Now, TTL gives us this. I measured each light individually after locking in the TTL exposure. I got F5 on my main light, which was close, F25 on my hair light, which was way off, and F9 on my fill light because it simply didn't know I wanted my fill light to be underexposed by two stops. Now, guessing my way on this three light setup would have taken me longer. And to be honest with you, my life in the real world is not a lighting tutorial. When I'm with a client, I don't want them to possibly see me test and the frames are way off. This results in reduced confidence, but I understand not everybody has a light meter or color checker and you may have to guess your way there regardless. One of the things I recommend if you have to use a guess method is go through and shoot each one of your lights individually. And if you're doing this with your client on set, just say, hey, I need five minutes just to test all the lights individually to make sure they look perfect on you and I can dial them in so that you look the best under this lighting setup. And while I do this, feel free to be on your phone or do whatever. It's only gonna take me maybe two to five minutes. And this way, they're not focused on what you're doing and staring at the screen, thinking that things look horribly or that you don't know what you're doing. They know exactly what you're doing. And when you're ready to take that first frame and everything is dialed in, they'll be much happier knowing that this is the image that you intended that you had in your mind. So you hear a lot of people say, well, I don't like by the numbers or you don't want a technically accurate exposure. Guess what? They're right. You absolutely do not need a technically perfect exposure for every shot. There's gonna be a lot of creative decisions that you make, but guess what? 
if you do not know how to get to a technically perfect exposure and you're a professional photographer, you have a problem. If you have more questions on how to use light meter, which is my preferred method, you can check out this video here. And as you know, my name is Ab Cisse, and there's levels to this.